In today's episode, we answer Veronica's question, what does a customer need in order to be a return customer? In other words, how can companies create brand loyalty and what is good customer service? Welcome to Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. Hello and welcome, especially if you're a new listener to the podcast. My name's Craig. And my name is Reza. Can I disagree with Craig? I equally welcome loyal customers as well who have been listening for a long time. <laughs> I, I welcome them both equally. So do I. So do I. New listeners and brand loyal customers. But we'll be speaking about that a bit later. Welcome to the podcast. We're going to start this week with an audio message from our friend Victor from Mexico, who asks about the difference between the UK, Britain, England. What is the difference? Hi, guys. This is Victor Izquierdo from Mexico. I have a question for you. Uh, maybe it's a question of my kids because they can't understand how it works, uh, the country that in you're living because they don't understand how how is um, better England, United Kingdom, Britain. I don't know. Could you please uh, explain me? And in another another hand, I recently used to listen your postcard. Maybe I thought that this is the better place to learn English course. Thank you for all. Bye. Thanks, Victor, for your message. It's a pleasure to hear from you. And I'm pleased that your kids are interested in knowing the difference between the UK, England, Britain, the British Isles, etc. We have spoken about this res haven't we yes if you go back to episode 52 so that's englishpodcast.com slash 52 we talked about that quite a lot there are differences between all those words there are victor so yeah go back go back please and listen to that victor with your kids of course with your children and it'll be great for their english and then if you have any doubts if something's not clear if you have any further any more questions please get in touch and ask us specifically for for anything that's not clear. Any comments on his on his message, Reza? Is there anything Victor could improve in his English? It was a very good message, Victor. One thing, uh, be careful with the pronunciation of Britain. A typical mistake, you said something like Britain. It looks like that because it's T-A-I-N, but it's not. It's pronounced Britain. And you also said, could you explain me? It's not you that you want us to explain, I, I suppose, I presume. It's something. So you need an object. So the better way to say that would be, could you explain it to me? Or could you explain the difference to me? So you need an object after explain. Explain something to me. One more little thing you said. I recently used to listen to the podcast that doesn't really make sense because used to is for things in the past but not now but recently means not long ago so we think you mean i recently started to listen to the podcast and watch the difference be careful of the difference between superlatives and comparatives you said victor it's the better place to learn English but you would use the better if you're comparing it with something else for example English beer is better than Spanish beer for example or Valencia Football Club is better than Barcelona for example but because you're speaking about lo más you need the best so it's the best place to learn English the best place we have some more feedback, another voice message. This time it's sent from Peru. 
And it's sent by Josue, who comes from Venezuela, but he's now working as a doctor in Peru. Hi, Craig. Hi, Raisa. This is Josue Medina from Peru. I'm a Venezuelan citizen, but I've been living and working here in Peru for about one year and a half. I'm 55 years old. I'm a doctor, too. I lost my job in Venezuela, but fortunately, I'm working here in Peru as a doctor. I have followed with you for about uh, two years, but uh, I have not been very constant. Uh, this is my first voice message. My understanding has improved since I listen to your podcast. I know I need to improve my vocabulary and my fluency. I will try to keep in touch with you. Keep doing your excellent and amazing job. This all for today. Bye bye. Thank you very much, Joshua, for your message. Um, lovely to hear from you. And we know there are some political problems at the moment in Venezuela. So we, our heart goes out to people who are being affected by the instability in the country at the moment. And I hope things are going well for you in, in Peru. Any comments on his message, Reza? Yes, a very good message. But there was a little bit of vocabulary, which is a common mistake. You said one year and a half. But actually, we do it the other way around in English, and we say one and a half years, and it's plural, one and a half years. And you said that you would like to work on your vocabulary. We have done podcasts in the past that you might find particularly interesting as a doctor. So the list is in the show notes, but I'll quickly tell you, we did a podcast about alternative medicine. To find that, go to inglespodcast.com slash 126. Or if you're listening via iTunes or another podcatcher, another application, just search for 126. Disease and illnesses. We spoke about diseases and illnesses back in 229. So inglespodcast.com slash 229. At the chemists, at the pharmacy, at the drugstore, and that kind of vocabulary was looked at in... 190, so englishpodcast.com 190, and we even spoke about death in 221, so englishpodcast.com slash 221. Yes, leave that one for the end. Leave death for the end. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave death till last yeah. in where it should be. And um, because you're a doctor, it made me think that people do sometimes study English for specific purposes. In fact, there's a whole area of English teaching and English studies called ESP, English for Specific Purposes. So if you are studying or working in medicine, in law, in engineering, in computers, in IT, or maybe in business and marketing, whatever your area is, you can go to schools in the UK and you can do specific courses that are based around the vocabulary of your area and your needs. But what do you do if you if you can't get to the UK and you don't have access, physical access, to these special courses? Well, we have a solution. You could use our sponsor, italki. On italki, you can find teachers who offer specific courses based around your needs. So you can work with teachers that are specialised to help you in your particular work or study area. And you're working with these teachers on a one-to-one, -one, face to face basis over Skype or similar software. It's a very effective way, a very quick way to become fluent in English and to be more effective in your area. Because human teachers are the best way to learn. You'll probably learn more with a human teacher than with some software or something similar. The lessons are customised for your learning style and your, your goals, as we spoke about last week, your goals and your aims. And one-to-one -one lessons are often better than a traditional classroom in a big group of students. So if you're interested to find out more information, go to our sponsor's page. You can find that at inglespodcast.com 261. Click on the link. And when you sign up and pay for your first lesson, I talk you're offering a $10 credit towards 
future classes. And we'd like to thank Italki very much for sponsoring this podcast. Greg, we have another piece of audio feedback. It's a message from Argentina, from Carolina. Hi, Reza. Hi, Craig. My name is Carolina. I'm from Argentina. I recently started to listen to your podcast. I came across them on the web. I think you guys are fantastic. I really enjoy the topics, the way you explain the meanings, and the pronunciation. Sometimes I find myself nodding along on my way to the office or saying out loud words, repeating after you, or even taking mental notes of things that I do understand quite well and I have to revise. So thank you very much. It's a real pleasure listening to you. Bye-bye. Well, what can we say, Carolina? It's, this is why we do the podcast. We're so happy that you find the podcast and the material useful. So we're really pleased that we're helping you. And I loved some of the expressions that you used in your message. I came across them on the web. The phrasal verb to come across that Carolina used means to find by accident. So she, she found them on the web. She came across them. Did you say you're nodding along or you're nodding off? So the, what's the difference, Reza, between those <laughs> phrasal verbs to nod along and to nod off? Oh, there's a big difference. Hopefully, Carolina, <laughs> you said that as you listen to us, you are nodding along. That means you're moving your head up and down to show that you agree with us. So to nod, N-O-D, can mean to move your head to say, yes, yes, that's right. So you're nodding along with us. So you're, you're listening and you're, you're, you're indicating, oh, yes, that's right, or I agree. Because nod off means fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your head nods, goes up and down when you're starting to, your eyes are closing and you're dropping off to sleep or nodding off to sleep. But we're sure we didn't. Well, maybe we did put you to sleep. I hope not. No, no hopefully you're nodding along, not off. <laughs> Another expression I really liked from Carolina's message was to take mental notes. She said she's taking mental notes as she's listening. She's trying to remember in her head, things that we mention and points that we make about English, taking mental notes. So thanks very much, Karina. That was a lovely message. Now we have some feedback in written form. It's an email from Veronica from Mexico. Veronica's Ronnie, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, Veronica. Veronica from Mexico. She's working in project management in the travel industry. And this is the question that Ronnie asked us. What does a customer need in order to be a return customer and go back to the same hotel or business? How can membership benefits be increased to encourage people to keep using the same business? And how can questions be asked that focus more around the relationship with the hotel than the money? Because obviously the money is an important factor. So we're looking at relationships also between the customer and the business. Uh, Ronnie says, it will be awesome to listen to you guys at the same time, apply the tips to my project. Many thanks on behalf of those busy guys who listen to you, but just don't have the time. I think she means have the time to write and, and respond with messages. Don't worry about that because we do see the numbers of people downloading the podcast, Veronica. So we know people are listening. But yeah, I know people who are too busy sometimes to, to send us a voice message. So what do you think, Reza? What are your thoughts on Ronnie's question? The first point, customer satisfaction, let's say from a hotel, for example. And personally speaking, what would encourage you to go back to return to the same hotel again and again and again or maybe even sign up for a customer loyalty card so that you perhaps get discounts in the future or special deals from the hotel what's important for you and what will, will take you back to the same hotel well n number one above all for me personally is that i got at least at least what i paid for that's number one. 
if I don't get what I paid for, there's no way I'm going back if I can avoid it. Yeah. So I want to get at least what I paid for. If they go above and beyond and they give me even more than what I paid for, if they give me added extras free, that's great. But if I don't get what I paid for, there's no way I'm going to go back. So value for money, would you say? Value for money, yeah. But, but not not only value for money, but honoring the contract of providing the service that they said they were going to provide. So if they said, it's just maybe a silly example, but in every room, there are four pillows, for example. And I get to my room and there's only three pillows. Mm-hmm. Maybe I I really like pillows. I want to have four pillows. They say, no, sorry, we don't have any more. It's only three now. That would annoy me because... They said in their advertisement there were four pillows, and I wanted four pillows. That reminds me quite recently, and I think I told you we went to stay in a hotel in Spain a few hours from Valencia because there were migration of birds. The birds were flying over, and we wanted to see the birds. And there was a hotel that was advertised specifically because on the roof they had a special balcony or special terrace where you could see the birds as they as they flew over your head. But when we arrived at the hotel, it was locked and it wasn't possible to go in with the key. So the reason, the main selling point of the hotel wasn't available. And that really, really annoyed me because that was the reason we chose the hotel. That's exactly what I'm talking about as well. Yeah. There are some things, though, that are very important. for. Well, I think convenience. I think convenience is a very important thing with a hotel. You want the location to be good. You obviously want the facilities that you need, and that can change. You don't have the same needs when you go to a beach resort hotel, where maybe you'd like a nice swimming pool, a spa, access to the beach, proximity to the beach, than a city hotel because you want to explore the city, in which case you're not going to be in the hotel very long, just to sleep. So you're looking for location and obviously comfort and value for money but it doesn't really matter if there's a health spa if there's a swimming pool if there are these five star facilities so i think it depends what you need from the hotel how important is price for you craig it's important but i don't value only on price i also value on other things so sometimes i might pay a little extra for particular things i would pay extra for internet i wouldn't save money if it didn't have internet and obviously a fairly comfortable room doesn't necessarily have to be big one thing that's important for me when i'm traveling to places that i don't know very well and that's airport pickup if there's the possibility to get an airport minibus a hotel minibus to take you to the hotel that's important for me sometimes not always but sometimes what about cleanliness how clean it is that's i've stayed in some very very cheap dirty hotels and some expensive dirty hotels. That, so, yeah, they're the worst ones if they're expensive and dirty. That's really irritating, isn't it? Yeah. I've stayed in hotels where the sheets were too dirty to sleep on. Oof. And I, I had to put clothes on the bed to sleep on top of the clothes. So the, the sheets hadn't been changed? No. Nope. Oh, for me, that's an absolute minimum. Nope. Clean sheets is other minimum. Other people's hairs in the bed. Oh, wow. And a bathroom that was too disgusting to go into. But that was in India. Right. And it was a very cheap place, so... It varies from country to to country. Another important thing for me in a hotel is the staff being helpful. And I mean, for example, you arrive late and you're really hungry. And some friends of mine were telling me two days ago, actually, that they stayed in a hotel and they arrived at 9 p.m. after not eating all day and the kitchen was closed and they refused to give them anything to eat. That was in the U.K., Yes, it was a small hotel, but I would expect the hotel to just be a little bit more helpful and understanding or maybe make a sandwich or get something from the kitchen to give the guests something to eat if they arrive late, even if that was at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I agree. Just to go the extra mile, that means make extra effort, which maybe isn't obligatory, but um, people will really appreciate it. So can you think of anything else that might take you back to a hotel? So we've said value for money, helpful service, maybe flexibility, going the extra mile, cleanliness, being clean. Anything else? I think we've covered just about 
everything. How how important is internet for you? Ah, internet seems uh, important to very many to many people. It used to be more important than it is now. Strangely enough, for me, why? Because now you've got your data anyway. So so if they don't give you Wi-Fi, it's no no big deal mm-hmm. for me. So it was more important when data was more expensive and more limited two, three, four, five years ago, and you didn't want to use it all up, particularly in a foreign country. But now, as regards the European Union, the EU, as everybody in Europe knows, the new rules insist that your company cannot charge you extra fees for being in another European Union country. So it's as if you were at home. So as long as you're a European in the European Union, it's not such a big deal anymore. It's going to be interesting to see if that's still true after Brexit, yeah. if you go to the UK. Yeah. I have a funny feeling that, that Britain will stop that agreement. I think they will. Because as soon as the uh, telecommunications company can get out of it, that's Salir, they're going to. Yep. Now they're legally obliged. They don't like it. They don't like it one bit. The European Union said you have to do it. But once the British companies see that they can charge us for it, I think they're going to do it. So hotel Wi-Fi in the UK is going to become more important as a, as a service. Yeah. And in and in Europe, for British people. All the other Europeans won't care. It'll just be the British. So apart from price, we've spoken about price, let's look more widely at other areas. What helps you, Reza, to develop brand loyalty for a product or service? Though not just hotels, about anything. Number one is value for money for me. Yeah. Well, two things, value for money and actual price. So sometimes perhaps I don't buy the best value for money because it might be expensive and I just can't afford it. For example, a really good value for money car. Mm-hmm. You know, imagine they're selling a, a Lamborghini top of the range at uh, 100,000 euros. That's cheap for a Lamborghini ch- top of the range. It's a bargain. It's not a ganga. Mm-hmm. But I haven't got 100,000 euros. So even though it's incredible value for money, I'm still restricted to the actual price. I just don't have that money. And so I might have to get a car which isn't as good value for money, but I can I can pay up to the price that they're asking. Yeah. So a combination of those two things for me. For me, customer service is really important. And I find more and more these days, customer service is one of the first things that companies save money on, especially with support on the internet, people you can phone for help and advice. If I'm getting good service from a company and I feel there's someone there to listen to me and help me if there's a problem, that goes a long way for me to help me develop customer loyalty. I will go back to that company because I'm happy with their with their service. Also, when a company surprises me, when I get something that's not expected, and that could be maybe a, a free meal or something in a hotel if you're not expect. I'll give you an example. I traveled to Japan a few years ago. And we found a hotel chain called Toyoko Inn, I-double-N, Toyoko Inn. And they provided rooms that were small, but clean with everything you needed. And they gave really good value for money. If you stayed in the hotel for four nights, they gave you one night free. If you stayed in the hotel for more than that, they gave you free meals. They gave you maybe a free pair of socks or some gift when you checked in. And it was really easy to make reservations for the following night if you were traveling from city to city because it was a hotel chain. So that ease of use, value for money, and the fact that they surprised me with free stuff when I didn't expect it, developed brand loyalty. And that was the only place that we stayed in because we were so happy with it. So it was the perfect thing for the trip. So those, that combination of, of things really went a long way to create customer loyalty. Yeah. Why is it that there are certain sectors of the economy where brand loyalty is definitely not rewarded? And if anything is punished, I'm thinking of one in particular, and that is insurance companies. We all know what happens if you stay with the same insurance company and you let them automatically renew 
renovar, renew your contract, they start charging you more year after year after year. Go to a new company for the first time and you'll get a better deal. Certainly in the United Kingdom, this is very, very exaggerated. Very exaggerated. So people change companies every year, every couple of years, because if you stay with the same one, you end up paying more. Have you noticed that? I suspect that there's some kind of mathematical formula, calculation, algorithm, that calculates that they earn more money doing that than keeping customer loyalty. So they can make more money over the people who don't watch how much they're paying, and it gets incremented to increment means go up every year than if they gave better prices to keep the customers. So they're losing money for the people who leave, but they're earning more money because they're raising the premiums on everybody else. And I think that's a, it's a calculated risk that they're taking. Or not a risk, because they know that it's money in the bank. I, that's what I think. I find it, though, very, very annoying. I don't know why anybody would show any customer loyalty to such a company. They simply don't deserve it. I agree. I agree 100%. So how important are these things to you, Reza? Good quality? Would you pay more? I mean, you've said value for money, but would you pay more money for some things because you're getting better quality? Yes, but depending on how much they charge. So it's the, the value for money, the quality price ratio. Yeah, but I am prepared. For example, this sounds really pretentious, maybe pretentious, you know, like, oh, who does he think he is? But I don't buy cheap bad food. I just don't do it. Yeah. And I'm not a rich person, but I'm not taking that risk. I'm not going to try and save one euro or two euros by eating something which I'm fairly sure is going to be really bad quality. Mm -hmm. I prefer to pay two, three, four, five euros more and know I'm getting something good because you're talking about your health. You know, what what you eat is what you are. I'm, I'm not going to play with that. There are certain things where I have quite high standards. I agree, absolutely. One of my favourite coffees is Illy Coffee, I-double-L-Y, and I, I really am fussy, Bickies Mickies, is it, about coffee? So when I see Illy, I will go and I'll have that cup of coffee, even if I pay more money for it, because I know it's really good coffee. So I'm very loyal to that brand of coffee because it doesn't usually disappoint, and I'm happy to pay more money to get better quality. What about being engaged by the company or service, which means they contact you and they speak to you have a dialogue with you a written dialogue or a spoken dialogue these are points that veronica has mentioned that we sh that we might discuss so you, you you know that there's someone there to talk to yes that's very important although there's a danger for the company if they contact the customer too much it begins to get irritating they've got yes. to look for the right balance that's especially that's true with email too many emails so they should always respond instantly and thoroughly to customer inquiries, but not bother, not bother customers too much if they, if they don't need you. And the next on the list is comments and reviews from other consumers. How much attention do you pay comments and reviews? As we all know, we're living in an age where this has never been more important because of internet, social media in general. TripAdvisor, all that type of thing. It's so Amazon. easy, Amazon, to read reviews. Everybody's got reviews. Let's be honest, a lot of them must be false. So some of them are going to be true, but, you know, it, it can't be that I read, you know, reviews of a restaurant and 50% say it's the best place ever and 50% say it's absolutely the worst place ever. It, there's something funny going on there. Yeah. yeah, I think there are some biased reviews, but I think in general... They can be a guide, I would say a guide, but you have to be careful. So up to a point, I would pay attention to reviews. I'm very suspicious. One thing I look out for in things like TripAdvisor is, you know, whenever you see the, the owner replies to the comments, yeah, and I'm deeply suspicious of owners who only reply to positive comments. I find that very suspicious. But, no, but you say that, but it is, we have had experience of hotels that we've complained about and the managers getting straight back and answering us quickly because they hate negative reviews. And it's very effective to give a bad review to get good customer service. And we've had that many times with, uh, with Amazon and also with TripAdvisor. 
So bad reviews often get a quick and positive reaction from the business. Craig, what would you say the, the, the percentage of good reviews to bad reviews of our podcast is? <laughs> Mainly good reviews, actually. We're, we're pretty lucky that we get uh, positive feedback on the podcast. So I, I can't remember seeing a very bad review. Maybe there are some there, but I, but I haven't seen any. So I'm quite pleased with that. Craig, what about the product that the company or the service that the company is selling? For you, is it important that it's up to date? It's a modern, it's a useful contemporary product or is it just quality? Do you want the latest, the most up to date product or do you want the highest quality product, which may not be the same thing? I think it depends what it is. I don't usually buy the latest, most up to date product, especially with technology, because they go so quickly out of date and after six months it's not new anymore so I tend to buy models that are maybe the last model a year old or something so quality is important but I don't usually go for the highest quality but I do like decent quality so say it's somewhere in the middle probably yeah. and you uh, yeah around about the middle and to get the latest the most up to date it's not important for me but if I can get it for a good price fine but I'm not one of these people who must have the latest and is prepared to pay any price for it because everybody knows what happens, particularly with technology. Within a year, the price has gone way down. Yeah. So if you just have a little bit of patience, you're going to get it much cheaper exactly. in a few months. You know. I agree. There's a principle called the Pareto principle from out of Italy that says that 80% of your company's future revenue or your future earnings, gananthias, will come from 20% of your current customer base, making it imperative or essential that you focus on creating loyal repeat customers that will continue to frequent your business. That quote is from Forbes.com. And to paraphrase, it's basically saying that you should invest your focus and energy on 20% of your customers, and that will give you 80% of your future's revenue. So it's basically saying be very careful where you focus your attention. What do you think about that? I think it's common sense, yeah, to focus your attention carefully on a particular clientele group of customers uh, and I would say to Veronica that that's especially important in the hotel business because yes you often do get repeat customers also in restaurants as well very important indeed uh, things like business travelers you know you know they're going to be on business trips you want to do that properly you're going to make a lot of money from that select group of customers sure but I'm not sure that this theory could be applied so well to everything, like supermarkets. I think in supermarkets, most people spend more or less about the same. I don't think that 20% of customers at a supermarket, Mercadona or something like that in Spain, or Consume or whatever, or El Dia, I don't think 20% of those people are spending 80% of the money. I find that hard to believe. If you go to, let's say, Consume, which is the name of a supermarket here in Spain, they give you points for how much money you spend. So the more money you spend, the more points you get, then you get discounts on certain products. I, I know. I've got the loyalty card. <laughs> <laughs> so you one of them. By the way, they're not paying us. <laughs> so you know where I'm going with this. Yeah. So in other words, what they're doing is that they're focusing rewards and benefits on the customers, maybe the 20% that are spending more money with them. So the more money you spend, the more rewards you get in return. So they're growing that sector of their customer base. Yeah, that's a good idea to reward people with, well, that's why they're called a reward card or a loyalty card. But I still don't think that those people, and I'm one of them, are 80% of the sales. I still don't think we're that, we're that much. We might be half, I don't know. Mm. But I think it's, it's hard for me to think that 20% buy 80% of the produce in a supermarket. Also, Amazon, for example, it's such a huge multinational global company. It's everywhere. With them, I also find it hard to believe that a fifth of the people 
are buying 80% of the goods. I, I think that's a bit exaggerated. But what do you think? P possibly. I'm not sure. I think you're right. It does vary from industry to industry and from business to business. But there's, there's, have you heard of a guy called Tim Ferriss? The name rings a bell. We, I think yeah. we might have spoken about him before on the podcast. He wrote a very successful book called The Four Hour Work Week, in which he speaks about this 80 20 ratio, this 80 20 principle. And basically, he had a business online and he had a small staff that were managing the business and he had some people working in customer services. And he noticed that. A small percentage, well, actually the majority of the customers, sorry, most of the customers were costing a lot of money with customer support. And some of the customers were spending a lot of money. And the, and the more money the customers were spending, the less service they needed for this product. So what he decided to do was to focus all of the business on that 20% that were spending more money with him and needing less customer service. And he grew the business to become incredibly successful because he wasn't wasting time with the 80% of people that were causing a lot of the, let's say, problems. Now, I'm not sure if that translates to the hotel industry because you want people coming back. So you want to encourage them to come back and you don't want to forget people that aren't good customers Maybe that's not good business, but in some industries, it does make sense to focus on the people who are bringing you in the most money, which is what he's saying. Yeah, sure. In some industries, I totally agree. Yeah. I, I did a bit of um, research on that principle, the Pareto principle, isn't it? Yes. So it was an Italian person. I can't remember his first name, Mr. Pareto. He discovered that, yeah, I think it was, a, it was about the turn of the, of the last century. So the year about 1900, more or less he discovered that 80% of land in Italy was owned by 20% 20 of the of people. people. Yeah, And you know what? It's still the same in some countries today. I believe in Brazil, it's something similar. And quite a few countries in South America and in Asia, it's about 20%, 30%, but mm -hmm. own about 80 or 90% of the land. But for me, there's a logic in that. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but money, big money creates money. Yeah. If you've already got loads of money, all you have to do is really sit back and wait for it to become more. Unless you do something stupid, uh, you can't really go wrong. Just invest it wisely. Yeah, and it will make money. You know, it's just a question of how much. Whereas if you start off with not, not much, all you can really do is cover your basic needs. So that's why I say the supermarkets, I think, don't really follow that principle because supermarkets sell things which are basic. We all need vegetables, tin goods, detergents. We, we all need it. It doesn't really matter if you're very rich or not. We, we all need it. Whereas land, we'd all like it. But until you, you get a piece of land yourself, which isn't easy at all, it's, it's hard to get more and more and more. But once you've got one piece of land, then very soon you can sell it and get a bigger bit and a bigger bit and a bigger bit. So I think it only works for products such as land ownership or ownership of a Lamborghini, which require a lot of money in the first place. Perhaps, you know what I mean? but let me give you a personal example. There are two local supermarkets in my area. One is the one I mentioned before, Consume, and the other one is Mercadona, which is quite popular in Spain. And... I used to go to Mercadona and, and then Consume opened. And I hated Mercadona because they didn't have a good selection of products because the service was really bad and rude and it was a horrible experience to shop there. And now my brand loyalty is strongly with Consume because the people are nicer, there's a bigger selection and it's a pleasure to go and shop there. So that's one way where my money now is going to consume 100 percent and i hardly ever well i never go into mercadona just because it's a bad experience yeah even if maybe some things are cheaper you might be thinking that consume sponsor us and mercadona certainly don't <laughs> <laughs> it's not true neither of them sponsor us they're just they're just observations if you'd like to know more about tim ferris and his work he has a very good podcast the tim ferris show which will be great for your listening, go to tim.blog.podcast and I'll put links to that podcast by Tim 
and also the four hour work week book in the show notes at inglespodcast.com slash 261. Also, if you'd like more vocabulary and information on this subject of marketing, market research and customer service, go to inglespodcast.com slash 130 and inglespodcast.com slash 110, 110, and you'll find more vocabulary on this topic. And now it's your turn to practice your English. What makes you loyal to a product or service? We'd love to know what you think about this topic. How can they reach us, Reza? You could send emails. Uh, you, Craig can be contacted at craig at inglespodcast.com or me, belfastreza at gmail.com. Although we would prefer to hear your voice, so please say hello, tell us where you're from, and send us a voice message. Go to speakpipe.com slash Inglés podcast. You're also welcome to visit the Mansion Inglés online store. There's a link to that in the show notes. It's store.mansioningles.net. And thanks to all our patrons on the Patreon scheme, especially to our gold sponsor, that's Bruno. Some of you may already know that Bruno offers walking tours of Copenhagen in English or Spanish, if you prefer. For more information, look at copenhagenwalkingtour.com. Or if you fancy Brazil, he also organizes tours in the favelas of Rio de Janeiro. Check out the information on favelawalkingtour.com.br. So thank you very much to Bruno. And thank you very much to all our Patreon sponsors, Craig, how can someone become a new sponsor? Just go to patreon.com, that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash English podcast. And for a minimum of $1 per month, although you could sign up for more, you get instant access to recent transcriptions of this podcast so you can read and listen at the same time. And many thanks to Angelica who transcribes these episodes Before we go, we'd like to welcome our new Patreon sponsors this month who have signed up to the Patreon program. They are Jose Ezequiel Olano. Thank you. Perla Guadalupe Jimenez Belmontes. Thanks very much. Nicolas. Thanks. Radioslav. Much appreciation. And Juan Comenge Acosta. Muchas gracias. Next week, Reza, what's the topic? Bruno might be glad to hear this. It's going to be about <laughs> Brazil. We have many listeners in Brazil and one or two have been asking us to talk about the country because occasionally we do do podcasts about specific countries and we've also got a request to speak about Brazilian football. So we'll be touching on Brazilian football and speaking about Brazil in general next week. Thanks for listening. Have a wonderful week. And until then, it's goodbye from me. Bye-bye from me. The music in this podcast is by Pitts. The track is called See You Later.